Hello everyone and welcome back to my TED talk. No, I am not wearing pajama pants with this suit and no, I am not going to prove that. The thesis for today's video is that Disney should start making video games again. Now, there were a lot of bad Disney games, I'm not going to lie, but there were just as many gems in their library and honestly I think we would all be better off with a remake of Walt Disney World Quest Magical Racing Tour. So we're going to talk about Disney games, but I really only want to talk about recent Disney games, even though by recent I mean like 10 plus years old, but you know what, this is my video and I'm going to do what I want. So basically in 2003, some guys at Buena Vista Games, aka Disney Interactive, went to then president Bobby Iger and were like, yo Robert, we want to make this dope game with Mickey Mouse and Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. And Bobby G was like, yo dude, I love that, but like we haven't owned Oswald since like the 1920s. And so then they were like, oh, I, but our boy Bobby G still really liked the idea. So later on in 2006, he saw his opportunity and he struck it. Because you see, Al Michaels, who was a commentator for ESPN, which is owned by Disney, was like, yo, Disney, uh, love ya, but I wanna go commentate with NBC. So our boy Robert called up Universal and was like, yo, Universal Studios Hollywood, listen, uh, let's make a trade. And then Universal was like, I bet. And so they did. They traded Al Michaels for Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. They traded a human person for a cartoon character. I'm not making this up. So then pretty much immediately our homeboy Bob phoned up the squad at Disney Interactive and was like, y'all remember that game you pitched to me like three years ago uh, about Mickey Mouse and Oswald? Uh, yeah, I got Oswald, so uh, go make it. And they did. In 2007, Disney acquired Junction Point Studios, which was owned by Warren Spector, who's the guy that made Deus Ex, which is not only one of the best RPGs of all time, but also just straight up one of the best video games of all time. So Warren Spector comes on the project to slamming his massive cojones on the table like, sup cucks, we're making a Mickey Mouse game. And they did. Or at least they tried to. You see, Epic Mickey was brilliant in concept, but just really flawed in execution, if for no other reason than the fact that you couldn't backtrack. Like, you have all these incredibly beautiful, detailed areas based off of past Disney lands and attractions and properties, but then after you beat the level, the game's like, nope, sorry, no can do, you already went there. Which would be fine if the game wasn't also like, you forgot to grab this, 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 and this, so now you'll never get the good ending. Boo hoo, go cry about it, loser, or start another save. And I did. I played through Epic Mickey like nine times when it came out trying to get the good ending, and every single time it felt like I was always missing something. The game was so close to being just so fun and exciting and different and new, but it just fell so short because you couldn't explore it after you were done. There was no backtracking. You couldn't say, oh, that was so fun, let's go do this instead, or let's go back and check out Tomorrowland again. You couldn't do that. It was too linear to a fault. Which sucks, like, it was so cool, but it was just so disappointing. Then Epic Mickey 2 came out and didn't fix any of the problems, but also introduced like a million others. So we're just not going to talk about it all, okay? Cool, awesome, good. So a lot of people think that after the failure of Epic Mickey, the next game to come out was Disney Infinity. Which actually isn't true. Between Epic Mickey and Disney Infinity, there was this little game called Disney Universe, which was an action-adventure co-op game released by Eurocom. I mean, I mean, that's really all I can tell you about it. It was bad and just a bad idea, so I'm not gonna waste time, but I felt like it was important enough to tell you guys here. So, I told you guys here. Cool. Let's move on to Disney Infinity. So, in 2013, seeing the success of Skylanders and Lego Dimensions, Disney was like, hey, I like money. And so they made Disney Infinity, which was a Toys to Life game with Disney characters. Isn't that crazy? And here, here's the thing, Disney Infinity could have worked in, in the same vein that Skylanders and LEGO Dimensions worked for a while because they could have been genuinely fun games with these toy tie-ins that you could collect and just open up different pieces of gameplay and other stuff to do within the game. It could have worked like that. But instead, Disney was like, you know, people are going to buy this shit anyway, so let's just not worry about it. So they made a very lackluster game with, I'll admit, very interesting toys to go along with it, but the game itself was just so boring and repetitive and I just, I played it once and I couldn't pick it up again. It was just so repetitive and boring and 
a lot like my videos actually. Also this isn't related at all but they still have the demo booth for Disney Infinity in Hollywood Studios. I, I mean like it's closed now obviously but I don't know it's like it, the, the game has been out for five years and has been canned pretty much since then. Like is there really just nothing else you can put in the space? I mean come on. So that essentially leads us to today. Between 2016 and now Disney hasn't really released anything notable except for Kingdom Hearts which is both Kinda a good thing and kinda not, because back in the 90s and early 2000s, Disney had some real bangers like DuckTales and Lion King and Aladdin, which all have this really positive, nostalgic retrospective to them. And lesser known games like Walt Disney World Quest Magical Racing Tour are just begging for a remake on modern consoles. Like seriously, I'm a sucker for kart racers. Mario Kart 8 is like my lifeblood. Like I would genuinely give anything for a Disney kart racer to come out like Walt Disney World Quest Magical Racing Tour. And no, I'm never going to abbreviate that at all. It is always and forever shall be Walt Disney World Quest Magical Racing Tour. But like seriously, it's a fantastic game. Like you, you're, you're kart racing, but like every track is a ride in Disney World and every kart is like a ride vehicle and it's fantastic. But for some reason, Disney was like, you know, actually we're not gonna let you race as actual Disney characters except for Jiminy Cricket and Chip and Dale in their Rescue Ranger outfits. Like what? It was so close to being like the perfect game. But like, you just, you just stumble right at the finish line. Why would, why would you do that, Disney? It was so close, it's so fun, but like why? This is a very personal topic for me, if you couldn't tell. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like. Let me know what your favorite Disney game is down in the comments below. And if you like what I do here, please hit that subscribe button. It genuinely means so much to me. And if you want to check out some other videos that I've made, uh, here's one right here. Maybe go check it out. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week.